All right, hi everybody, and welcome to a beginner storyline workshop. We are here with Isabella, the newest content creator on the team, who's going to help lead some uh, weekly storyline content for you all here in the new community space. Um, so yeah, today we are building flashcards with Isabella. I'm gonna join you again at the end, but we're gonna hand it over to Isabella for the first, the first workshop that she's ever led for the community. So we'll turn it over to you, Isabella. Okay. So hi everyone, I'm Isabella, Isabella Maldonado, and for this project, I'm going to show you guys how to create flashcards and storyline. And I'm actually going to share a Google Doc in the chat, and you don't need to download anything, but we're just going to be copying and pasting text from this Google Doc. Google Doc. Now I'm gonna share my screen as well, so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. Now, so this is the project we're going to be building. And as you can see, when you select it, it jumps between the answer and the question, as well as the next card button is hidden at the beginning of each card because we want the user to see the answer before they move on. So when I select it to view the answer, we see the next card button. And again, for our third card, and our third card is our last card. So when we select it, it will bring us back to our first card. And then this is our Google Doc right here in case you wanted to look at it. Well, I'm sure you're already looking at it, but we have our question and our answer. So we're just going to be copying and pasting our questions and answer from this. Now let's go ahead and go to Storyline. So let's see. There we go. Now for for our session, we I have well for starters, I have a brand new session open and I already have my project saved. So go ahead and save your project file so that way you won't lose it in case it crashes because it happens sometimes. And to get started, we're gonna go ahead and click on our slide. So to do this, we're just going to double click on our untitled slide to enter in slide view. And notice how this is a kind of like a, more like a square. We, this isn't the correct resolution we want it to be. So we're going to change our slide size. And to do this, we're going to go back to story view and we're going to go to the design tab and we're going to select the slide size. So again, we're going to go to the design tab and we're going to select the slide size. And under preset, we want it to be 16 by nine. And we want our width to be 1280. And because I have uh, aspect ratio locked, when I select height, it's automatically going to jump to 720. So that's what we want. We want our width to be seven, or we want our width to be 1280, and we want the height to be 720. So I'll just leave this on the screen for a while so you guys can copy this. So I'm just going to go ahead and select OK to finalize our new slide size. Now we can go back to our slide. And as you can see, it has changed the resolution. Now from here, let's go ahead and start building out our card. So we're going to go to the insert tab and we're going to go to shapes so we can add in our rectangle. So let's select our rectangle and notice that my cursor ha has now changed. Um, this means I can now uh, click and drag to add in my shape. So I'm going to left click and drag to create our first shape. And we're going to create, oh, hold on, let me go ahead and release my mouse to create the shape. And we want this short rectangle because this is going to be the part of the project. Hold on, let me bring it back up. This is going to be this part of our card where it says card one or card two. This is what we're building right now at the moment. So this is what it's going to be. And let's go ahead and change it from blue to black. So when you have it selected, you can access the format tab and you know it's selected because it has handles around the shape as well as the shape is currently uh, highlighted in the timeline and the timeline uh, controls the timing of your up. The timeline controls the timing in your project and it also actually displays everything in the slide itself. So as we're building in more shapes, you're going to notice that the timeline is going to list more shapes. So to change its color, we're just going to select it and we have our handles and we're going to go to the format tab. Now we're going to go to shape fill and we're going to select black. So I'll do that again. We're going to be in the format tab. We're going to be under shape fill and using this drop down, we're going to select black. 
Now for the outline, we also want it to be black. So we just select black. And we want the weight of our uh, outline to be three pixels. So again, I would go to the shape outline. I would go to weight and I would select three pixels. So now we have our shape the correct color and we can now add text to our shape. So to add text to our shape, we need it. To, we need to select it first and we can type in the text in our on our keyboard. So I'm going to call this card 01. And there we go. We've created this part of our card. Let's go ahead and move on to the actual answer, uh, the actual answer part. So we're going to add in another rectangle. So we're going to go to insert again, shape, rectangle again. And notice how we have these purple lines. This is storyline letting us know that our cursor is currently aligned to that shape. So when I have both this uh, the X and Y axis appearing, so these two purple lines, that means I'm completely aligned to our shape. So I'm just going to click and drag it. And when I reach the end of the shape, another purple line appears. So I'm just going to create this shape. And let's see, this right here is a good enough size. So now we have our shape and let's go ahead and change the color of this shape as well. So remember, we go to the format tab, we go to fill, and for this shape, we want the fill to be white. And the outline is going to be black again. And the weight is going to be three. So we've created our first card. And let's go ahead and add in our question. So we're going to go to our Google document and we're going to copy and paste our first question, which is what is a state? And just paste it in. And it looks like nothing happened, but our text is actually there. Uh, currently our text is set to white. So let's go ahead and select our shape. And so we're gonna select it and notice that the text cursor is now gone. So we have selected the shape and not the text. And when we go to, we're gonna go to the home tab, we're going to go to the font and we're going to edit the shape, the font color. So there we go. Now we can see our shape. So using the font tools, I'm going to use this grow font button to make the font bigger. So let's go ahead and make it about 40. So 40 is a good size. Now to center our shape, we're going to use, we're going to go to the format tab and we're going to use the arrange and align features. So right now I have my question box selected. So when I select the align center button, it aligns to the center of our uh, slide. And we're going to do the exact same thing with our card one box. So let's select it. And again, select align center. So now our card is exactly in the center of our uh, slide. And here, let's go ahead and build in our next button. So we'll, we're gonna use the rectangle again. We're not going to use this button right here. We're going to actually add in a shape and use the shape as a button. So we're going to select it, select the rectangle again, and we're going to click and drag to create our new rectangle. There we go. And let's go ahead and change its color. So again, format, we're going to go to shape fill, select black, and this shape doesn't need to have an outline. So we're going to select no outline. So again, for this shape, we're going to go to the format tab. We're going to go to shape fill. We're going to select black and we're going to select no outline for this button. And let's go ahead and add in the text for this button. So we already have it selected. So as you can see, we have the handles appearing and let's go ahead and type in next card. And let's go ahead and align this shape as well. So make sure you select the shape and not the text. So select it, go ahead and center in our next button, next card button. So we have it selected. We go to the format tab and we select align to center. And looking at our project, there's a lot of negative space right above our card. And there's the, our button and our card are really close to each other. So we're actually going to select our card and push it up a little bit so we won't have this negative space. So to select two shapes at the same time, 
we're going to left click on our mouse and we're going to drag so we can get this Marquise tool. So there we go. And we select it. So I'm actually going to um, use the key, the arrows on my keyboard to push it up. So there we go, that's enough space. So there we go, now we have our card set up. And no, we're not going to be using grouping in this example. Now, from here, let's go ahead and change the background color of our slide. So we're going to right click on the slide and make sure you're right clicking on the slide and not on a shape. You won't get this pop up if you select the shape. So on the slide, right click and go to format background. So again, right click and select format background. Now under fill, we're going to change the color of our background. Let me move this really quick by selecting this drop down menu and we're going to be selecting a color from this uh, color box. So I'm going to select this teal color and it immediately changed its color. So that was nice. We didn't have to push a button or anything. So uh, I'll just repeat that again. So we're going to use this color box and we're going to change its color to this teal color or to really any color you want. So I like this teal color, but if you want to make it like pink or green, you can go ahead and do that. And we're going to select close once we get that. So now we have set up the card itself and let's add in a, uh, a layer for our answer card. So a layer allows you to display additional content on a slide during certain points of the project, either based on the timeline or based off of the uh, learner's interaction. So for this project, when the person selects our question box, we want the layer to appear. And then when they select our answer layer, we want it to disappear. So let's go ahead and add in this layer. So under slide layers, we're going to select the new layer button. And we now have an untitled layer. Uh, we now have an untitled layer uh, added. And you may notice that our project has now become dimmed. This is because we're on a layer. And when we select our base layer, the colors go back to normal. So when we select a layer, everything becomes dim. Now to add in our question box, we're going to go back to our base layer and we're going to select our question box. And now we're going to copy and paste this box to our answer layer because they need to be the exact same side or the exact same size. So we're going to right click on our shape, copy it. We're going to select our layer and we're going to paste it. So there we go. And let's go ahead and change our question to our answer. So let's go to the Google Doc, copy our answer. And we're just going to replace this text. And it looks like I have an extra amount of text. There we go. So obviously this text is too big. So let's select it. Or actually we can just select the shape itself. We don't have to select the text. So we select the shape. We go to the Home tab. And we are going to use, you can either use these buttons right here or you can use this drop down to uh, change the size of the font. I like to use these buttons. So I'm just going to decrease it to about uh, 28 is good. Now let's also go ahead and change these margins. So let's right click on our shape. Let's go to format shape. So again, right click on the shape go to format shape. Oh, layers are used to display additional content on your slide. So like for this, for this project, we want to uh, uh, show our answer box later on in the project when the user clicks the uh, question box. So we're gonna change the margins at the moment. Let's go to the text box and we're going to, let me go ahead and move this out of the way so we can see what we're doing. So we're going to use the left and the right margins to push our text so they're not so close to the edge of our shape. To the ed of, edge of our shape, sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to type in 30. And you're going to see the left side of our text move. So there you go, now we have a bigger gap. And for our margins, and again, we're going to change this to 30. So there we go. 
and we're just going to change the left and the right margins. So we want, want them to be 30 for each side. Once you have that done, you can just select close. And let's see, let's go ahead and rename this layer. So that way we know, even though it's like one layer, let's just go ahead and rename it so we can get in this habit. Cause it's important to rename your shapes and layers as well as your slides. So to select the, to change the name of your layer, you just double click on it, double click on the text. So double click on it and you would type in the new name. So I'm going to call this answer. We'll just call this answer layer. And there we go. We have now created everything for this project. Okay. So let's go ahead and add in our triggers, but I did notice that our next card button is it's not really centered. There's like a bunch of negative space here and it's still pretty close to the edge of our slide. So I'm just going to select it and push it up as well. This is just me being picky. Let's see from here, let's go ahead and actually let's go ahead and view our project. So we have no, we didn't add any triggers at the moment, but let's go ahead and view it. So to view it, we will go to preview and we will select this slide. So again, preview this slide. And this may take a while depending on your computer. So this is our project at the moment. So we have the slide we created, but we also have all this extra stuff. So we have a menu, we have the name of our project, resources, and a forward and back sli slide button, which we don't really need because we have the button we're about to program and all this other extra stuff that we don't need. This is the player and it's automatically on for every storyline project. So let's go ahead and turn this off. So let's X out of it by selecting close preview. And let's go to story view. So I'm going to select the story view button or that's story view tab at this at the top left corner. And let's select player, which is in the home tab. So under home tab, you're going to see the player. And now we see the player properties. So under menus and controls, we're going to turn this off. And right here, this is the preview of what our project looks like. Once I turn it off, all that stuff is going to disappear. So again, under menus and controls, we're going to turn it off and select OK to finalize this decision. So now when we go back and view our project, we're going to see that we're just going to see our slide. So let's go to preview this slide. And now we only see our slide, which is good because this is what we want. So let's go ahead and close it and start adding in our triggers. So let's go back to slide view and double click on our slide. So let's go ahead and add in those triggers. So if we look at the triggers panel, you're going to see that there's two triggers that are automatically added. These two triggers control the forward and back button on the player we just disabled. So we don't need these triggers. So let's go ahead and delete them. So to delete them, you would select them and select the trash can button. And in this pop-up, you can just select OK. And again, we will do this again for this last trigger. Select and select the trash can button. And select, yes, we want it to be deleted. OK, so let, let's start adding in our triggers. And let's actually start with our card. So the first trigger we want to add in is when they select our question box, we want our answer layer to appear. So that's the first trigger we want to add in. So let's do that. Let's go to add new trigger. And for the action, we don't want to jump to a slide. We want to show a layer. So let's show a layer. So we want to show our answer layer. And we want this to happen when the user clicks our uh, question box. Now, notice how all these are called rectangle. So we got rectangle one, two, and three. Uh, we're going to go ahead and rename our shapes because this, this is going to get confusing when creating triggers. So luckily for us, Storyline is currently highlighting the shape. 
So right now I know rectangle two is our question box, but it's still better just to rename your shapes because it's it, it's going to be easier to find them in the long run, especially when you're making more complicated uh, projects that have like 10 to 20 shapes in every slide. So we're going to select rectangle two because we know it's our question box and we're going to select, select okay. Now let's go ahead and rename our shapes. So to do this, we're going to go to the timeline and we're going to select our shape. So we know rectangle three is our next card button because it's currently highlighted. So let's go ahead and rename it. So let's click on it or double click on it and let's rename it. And I'm gonna call this shape um, the next card button. button. There we go. And notice how even though I called it the next card button, button is currently being uh, cut off. We can actually adjust our timeline by selecting the playhead and dragging it so we can view our the entire name of the shape. So there's a handy tip for you. You just select the playhead and you can move around the playhead. So let's go ahead and rename our rectangle two. So let's select rectangle two. And it looks like it's our question box. So let's rename it question box. So we're going to double click on it and name it question box. And again for rectangle one. And as you can see, rectangle one is our card number. So let's call it card number, enter. And now we have our shapes renamed. And let's go ahead and rename the shape we have on our answer layer. So let's select our answer layer and let's rename rectangle one to answer layer or answer box. There we go. Now, oh, before we view our project, notice that even though this shape was originally called rectangle one and we changed this name to question box. Uh, thankfully, Storyline automatically updated its name in the trigger. So we don't have to reconnect anything. It automatically changes when we change its name. So now our trigger will say, show the answer layer when the user clicks the question box. So we're going to select okay. And let's go ahead and preview our project. So we're gonna go to preview this slide. So when we select our question box, we can now view our answer. So that first trigger is now working. And when I try to click it, obviously our layer is not disappearing because we haven't added that trigger yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's close the player and let's select our answer layer. Make sure you add this trigger on the answer layer. So answer layer and let's select new trigger. So we don't want to show the layer, we want to hide it. So let's hide the layer. Let's hide this layer when the user clicks our answer box. So this is our second trigger. So make sure again, you add it onto the answer layer. And the trigger is we want to hide the layer when the user clicks the answer box. Going to select OK. And let's go ahead and preview the project again. So preview this slide. So when I select the question box, we can now see the answer. And when I select it again, we can now see the question again. And I can actually click it a lot of times. So we can see the question and the answer as many times as we want. Let's uh, create the states for this button. So a state allows you to change the appearance of a shape uh, or the appearance of an object, depending on the learner's input. So we want this button to do three things. The first thing we want it to do is we want it to appear when the viewer use when the viewer views the uh, question. The second thing we want it to do is when we hover over it, we want the button to change the color. And the third thing we want it to do is when they select it, we will be brought to the next slide. So let's work on the first part of that, the first part of that. So the first thing we're going to work on is we're going to hide, we want to hide this button at the very beginning of the slide. So let's select it. Let's go to states. And again, states allow you to change the appearance of an object based on the learner's action. 
and let's edit the state. So we're going to go ahead and add in our hover state. So let's select new state and let's type in hover. Now, hold on. If I use this drop down, you're going to see that there's already a built in hover state. But for this project, we're going to create our own. So we're just going to call this hover two. And we're going to add it. So let's change the color of this shape. So let's go to format. Let's go to shape fill. And we're going to go down to this grayish color. This is a good color. So now we've added our state and we're going to select done. So all we did is we just edited the, the fill of the shape. So once you, you're done with that, just select done editing states. And to have it hidden at the beginning, we need to change its initial, initial state. So right now it's set to normal, which is our normal state right here, but we want it to be set to hidden. So let's select this dropdown and let's select this hidden option. So there we go. So again, we want our hover to state, which is a different color compared to our normal state. And we want our initial state to be hidden. So once we have those two things done, now we can start adding in our triggers. If you're having issues changing the color of the states, uh, make sure you're actually in the edit state mode. So right now, even though I technically have the shape selected, I'm not going to change the color of hover two of the hover two state because I'm not in the edit state mode. So we're going to go to, so yep. So once you get those two done, let's start adding in those triggers. So the first trigger we're going to add in is the trigger that's going to make our shape appear. So let's go to new trigger. And we want to change the state of our next card button to normal when the user clicks our question box. So the moment our user clicks the question box, we want this trigger to appear. So I'll just leave this trigger up for you guys. So there you go. Cool. So let's go ahead and view this project. So preview, we're going to go to this slide. We select our, we select our question box. And our next card button appears. And when, even when we select the quest, the answer box, the button will still be appearing. So let's view that again. Let's close this preview and preview it again so we can see this. So when we select it, our next card button now appears. So there we go. We have our first trigger done. Now let's go ahead and move on to our hover trigger. So we're going to go to new trigger and we want to change the state of, yeah, we want to change the state of our next card button and we want to change it to hover or hover to make sure you do not select the built in hover. And not when the user clicks, but when the mouse hover over hovers over and you're going to notice it says user hover hovers over and it says mouse hovers over here. Those are the exact same things. I'm not sure why Storyline lists them as two separate items. So when I select it, it's going to say user hovers over, but we're going to select mouse hover hovers over. So when the mouse hovers over the next card button, and we do want restore previous states when the user hovers out. So this is our next trigger and I'll just leave this on the screen so you guys can copy it. So I'm just going to select OK to add this trigger and let's preview it again. So let's go to preview slide and we also could select the desktop icon right here to view the slide if we wanted to. So we select our card, the next card button appears and when I hover over it, it changes color. So there we go. This trigger is not working.
Now let's go ahead and add in our last trigger for the slide. So let's close the preview. And remember that this trigger, when they select it, we want to be brought to the next slide. So let's add a new trigger. We don't want to change the state of, we want to jump to a slide. We want to jump to the next slide when the user selects, when the user clicks the next card button. So this is the last trigger. I'll leave this on the screen so you guys can copy it. And I'm just going to select OK so we can finalize this trigger. Now, we can't really view this last trigger because we don't have another slide yet. So let's go ahead and create our next card. So we're going to actually duplicate this slide and just uh, change the question and answer on that slide. So to duplicate a slide, you would go to scenes, you would mouse over, you would mouse over the slide you want to duplicate, you would right click, and you would select duplicate. So again, you would put your cursor over the slide, right click and select duplicate. So there we go. And notice how both of these are called untitled slide. Let's go ahead and rename them because that because it's going to be, if everything is going to be called untitled slide, it's going to, we're going to have a hard time identifying each slide. So to rename a, sl rename a slide, you just double click on it and just rename it. So I'm going to call this one, what is the state? There we go. And for our second slide, according to our Google Doc, it is, what is the trigger? So there we go. So we just double click on it and we'll call it what is a trigger. There we go. Now let's go ahead and change our question and answer. So we're going to use our Google, the Google Doc, and we're going to copy and paste the text and replace the question and answer. So I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. And I am on the second slide, which is what is a trigger? So I'm going to just select it and replace it. So that's how I would replace the question. And for, ans for our answer, we're going to select the answer layer. We're going to go back to our Google Doc, select the answer, copy it, and paste it onto our answer box. And notice that we don't have to change the margins or anything. If we right click on the shape and we go to format shape, the margins are going to be the same because we copy and paste the, the whole slide and it, the shapes are going to remember all the settings we added to them. So automatically the margins are at 30. So we don't have to edit them this time. So there we go. And let's go ahead and change this from card one to card two. So let's select it and name it card two. Now let's go ahead and view this project. So we're going to go to preview and this time we're going to select this scene because we want to view both slides. So let's select it. So when we select our card, we can see our next card button and it's being hovered over the hoverings working. And when I select this button, we are brought to card two. And when I select this card, we can also view the question and answer, as well as the hovering is also working on this button. So we actually don't need to add any new triggers to this slide. So we're done with the slide actually. Now let's go ahead and create our third and final slide. So we're just going to copy and paste it again, or copy and paste the whole slide again, or duplicate it, duplicate it. So we're going to right click on it and select duplicate again. And let's go ahead and rename this slide. And I believe this slide should be called, yeah, what is a layer? So our third slide was going to be called, what is a layer? What is a layer? There we go. And again, we're going to copy and paste the question and answer to this card. So we're going to copy it and paste it. And we're going to do the same thing for the answer. So we're going to select the answer layer, 
go to the Google Doc, copy our answer, and we're going to paste it. Let me select all of it. And there we go. And let's go ahead and make this font smaller. So let's select the shape and we're going to shrink this font just a little bit. So that looks a bit better. And let's also go ahead and change this from card two to card three. So once you have card three done, let's preview the project again. So preview this scene. When we Remember, we want to select this scene because we want to view all the slides in this scene. So when we select it, we can view our answer. The next card button appears. Now we're on card two. We select it. We can now go to our third card and we can view the answer as well on the third card. Now, if I try to select the next card button on our third slide, nothing's going to happen because there's no other slide to go to. So we do need to edit this trigger so that it brings us back to our first slide. So let's close this preview and make sure you're on our third slide. Let's find the trigger that controls uh, which slide our next button, our next card button will bring us to. So if you have to select the shape, the triggers that are attached to the shape will become highlighted. So it's one of these two. So it's this one right here. So let's double click on this, this trigger. And let's change the slide number, the slide to our first slide. So what is a state? Yes. So this is the trigger we're changing. I'm going to select OK. And let's preview this scene again. So we select it. Next card. We select it. We can view our answer. Next card. We select it. And when we select our next card button, we are brought back to slide one. And we can keep repeating this process. Hey everyone. Nice job, Isabella. <laughs> um, good stuff. Yeah, Isabella, I mean, I don't know if you I don't think you talked much about your journey in the beginning, but you're pretty new to Storyline. Yeah, yeah, I am. I think I got nervous and I forgot to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, so Isabella, I mean, I think you probably started using Storyline like a month ago. Yes. And I actually took your course, which was a really big help to your storyline yes. um, project course. Yeah, so Isabella started as an intern. So Isabella was helping with like social media and stuff. And I and like I saw, I mean, Isabella was just helping a lot and like took feedback really well. So then when Isabella was like, okay, I'm gonna start looking for an ID job. I'm like, can we actually hire you like on a more full time basis and and you just help out with other facets of of the business. <laughs> um, so Isabella is helping out with a lot of stuff behind the scenes, but she is also learning storyline we put her in the project lab and and i've met with her a few times and she's been prepping pretty well for this session so so yeah that's what we're going to expect from isabella maybe every one or two weeks isabella will do a beginner friendly workshop like this she'll be learning with some of you uh, just because she is kind of new we'll be helping her on the back end too so we want to bring good content to you i'll still be doing some storyline workshops some more advanced stuff and probably a year from now, Isabella will be doing a lot more advanced stuff. <laughs> um, but we're still, I mean, this was the very first session like this. And thank you all for showing up to it and, and being here with us. Um, Isabella, feel free to stay up on stage, but I think it's time to, I think it's time to do a giveaway of, of an Articulate Storyline license. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for everyone who made it to the end here. So, um, we haven't done any any giveaways before, but I know a lot of us here are newer to the field and we're working on trial on on, our, on free trials. So we're gonna try to do a giveaway, um, hopefully to someone who doesn't have Storyline. So we'll go on the honor system. If you are if you're already paying for Storyline, just let us know and we'll we'll do a reroll. Um, I'm gonna try to do this with like a random number generator. All right, so row four and column two. One, two, three, four. Julie Valverde, moment of truth. Do you already have a storyline license or do you need one? <laughs> Very suspenseful. 
No, you do not. All right. Okay. Julie Valverde is our winner here. Cool. Congrats, Julie. <laughs> and and we'll, we'll try to incorporate these. We're going to try to do more giveaways, just more ways to give back to the community. So we'll do storyline licenses. We will do um, probably books and more. It's not going to be every session. And I don't want to like publicize in advance. I don't want people coming here just for giveaways, but just a nice way to celebrate people who make it to the end here. And then also for everyone else who, who is here until the end, um, yeah, we mentioned the pro Project Lab, so that's where Isabella has been learning. Some of you, I, mean, I know, have reached out with questions about that. We're going to run a $200 discount on the Project Lab until Monday, so a quick three-day discount. That's, that's our paid offering where it is like structured and you build eight projects with us. Um, not required. We're going to be doing plenty of free content. We have plenty of free tutorials on YouTube, so this is only for people who are looking for a paid um, program. Nice. Carmen just got started in the project lab. Yeah, I know a handful of you here are, are in the lab. <laughs> um, but just for people who may have had your eye on it, we want to make sure you come away with something here. So $200 off on that. We'll just use the code SAVE200. So SAVE200 for project lab checkout. That will last until Monday. All right, everyone, and we'll be back next week, same time with another storyline workshop. It will be either Isabella or I. We're still going to figure out how advanced or how beginner friendly we want to make it. Um, but we're going to build like a music player, I think. So, you know, like inspired by like Shopify or Apple Music, we're going to build a music app in storyline. We'll either be beginner or advanced. We still need to figure it out. So same time next week. And you know where to find us. There's plenty of other content going on too. I mean, Emily is doing game inspired e learning and storyline workshops in here. I think Isabella is going to get started like a, a more informal, like storyline study group session going where people who are new just come together and kind of ask questions or explore the tool together. So there's a lot going on. You all know where to find us. And we'll talk to you all soon. Thanks again, Isabella. And let's get some applause emojis for Isabella for leading that oh. session. <laughs> Thank plus, you guys. One on your keyboard to spam those. Applause emojis. <laughs> yeah, fun. thanks everyone for being here. <laughs> all right, good job, Isabella. Thank you, everyone. Talk to you all soon. Bye bye for right. now. Bye, everyone.